Need help with Dead House Gate? No. No. With House of Chains? I gotcha. At least for the first sub book. So I'm going to tell you, if you need some help keeping everything in order, that's what I'm here for. Now, in the prologue, we have this guy. And his name is Troll. Now, Troll is a Tist Edur. And what I know about the Tist Edur is that long ago, there were these people. There was this mom. And the mom had all sorts of kids. She had kids with very black skin. And they were called the Tist Andy. And she also ha might have had another group of kids who had light skin, but I'm I'm a little bit fuzzy on the details. But she also had kids who had gray skin, and they were the t Tist Edur. Now, I might have that totally wrong. It might be that the Tist Edur uh, bred with other people who were not these Tist Dandy, but for the most part, we've been scared of these Tist or Tist Andy or a Tist Edur. And Troll is one of these Tist Edur people. Now, at the prologue, it's a really short prologue, we have Troll and his brothers and maybe his sisters but a whole bunch from his group and he's in trouble and here lies the theme of this book and that is snark you shouldn't have snark and that's what this book is teaching them they brought this snarky brother troll to the flooded warren from dead house gates now, the Flooded Warren, if you remember, is this area where everything has just been water-worlded. And they had this river that has been pouring through this hole in the sky, or whatever, and just flooding everything in this other Warren world. And that's where this is taking place. There's this big wall that they've set up, to try to kind of keep the water at bay, but eventually everything's going to run out. So they have kind of brought him to chain him at this wall because he is snarky and he had the gall to say that their enemies were Purkin, the enemies of the Tist Edur, which I'm pretty sure he's talking about the Tist Andy. And that's something that you shouldn't be saying if you are a Tist Edur. And he's like, guys, I, you know, it's not me that's causing this separation and imbalance and stuff. It's, it's this guy that's done it. And it's like, no, don't have snark. And then they leave him there. And so I don't know what happens to him for the rest of the book. But if I had to guess... Somewhere around the 325 page mark, we probably get to see him again, if I had to guess. All right, so let's get to the main character from this book so far, in the first quarter of the book. His name is Karsa. Karsa Orlong. And he has a couple friends. Actually, one of his friends is... Uh, I, I think his cousin as well. And, and but and they're not really great friends. But he has one friend friend named Delam and one friend that is named Bayroth. Now I should say before we get too uh, confused on who's who and we got to make some connections th here. Karsa has a crush on someone named Dalis. And Karsa thinks if I go on this big quest and unify all of our people, the Urid people, 
All these people are the Urid people who are part of this clan. Now, this clan, uh, there's lots of people in these clans and they've kind of broken up. They've been separated. Much like the, the, the people that come from this mom were separated. People from this clan, uh, there's, there's about seven of them-ish. Uh, and they are called, they are the Teblors. And the Teblors don't really know who they are. So all these people are Teblors. They're really strong and really scary. And especially Karsa thinks, if I go out and kill enough children and rape enough people, Dalis is going to be all over me. She's going to like me. But since uh, he doesn't really know that it's actually Bayroth and Dalis who are sort of a thing. So there's a moment where before they're going to go on this quest, Karsa's like, hey, Dalis, why don't you give me a blessing, your blessing on this thing, on, on our quest? And Bayroth's like, no, uh, she, he, she already gave me uh, her blessing. And he's like, what? Seriously, Dalis? And he's like, okay. And so now there's this friction between these two. And Karsa's like, oh, I didn't even want her anyway. So they want to go on this quest. But not everyone wants them to go on this quest. Uh, Karsa is kind of like his grandpa. His grandpa's name is P P P Polk. Something like that. And Polk has a bit of a history. He's kind of a local legend in this Urid tribe where he kind of went out and he was a big, strong dude. Uh, and we find out he's a big of a, uh, he was a bit of a wuss at one point, but that's not really a part of this, you know, introduction. And Polk wants him to be tough, wants Karsta to be tough, just like him. But they also have Polk kind of wanted Karsa, a type of Karsa for his son. And Karsa is a bit like a Conan the Barbarian type. But instead, Polk had this wussy, wussy, wussy kid. And his name was Sinig. Something like that. Sinig. And Sinig doesn't want to be like his dad. Sinig's a bit of a of a hippie also has a little bit of snark but keeps it to himself very passive uh and 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 even karsa kind of thinks his dad's a little bit of a square and a little bit of a loser and a little bit lazy and a little bit snarky uh uh i, I can't remember uh Sinig's wife she was snarky and look what it got her. Uh, Anjiko, but Ma, Karsa's mom. Karsa's mom. I don't know if she was snarky. Uh, but she started to, to meddle in things a little bit too closely. She was meddling in this tribe over here. You know when I said there's all these tribes? There is a secret tribe. And I can't remember what they're called. But it is this secret tribe that is actually made up from all the tribes. And they have scars on their faces and they don't smile. And they kind of uh, aren't great with jokes. Their, uh, their delivery is all off. So they don't really let people know about them and don't want people to know about them. And Karsa's mom was like, hey, there's these guys over here. And they got a little bit too close. Or I'm thinking that's totally wrong. And th this, is, this is actually something else. It's either that she got too close about knowing about them. Or she got too close about knowing about these seven faces. Now, who the seven faces are is... The seven faces are, you know, I don't even know who they are. But whenever it is daytime, they kind of show up. And they are almost like these elder gods of all these Treblor pe 
people. Now, it could be that they are the elder gods of them, or it could be people uh, pretending that they are and deceiving these guys. I'm not far enough in the book to actually know that. But they all hang out, and then as soon as the night comes up, they kind of crumple down. They might be the Talani Mass. Okay. All right. Okay, okay. Well, that throws me all in a loop. They might be Talani Mass. I'm thinking. Right on the spot here. They might be either that, and they might either be the kind of the... Yeah. Holy smokes. Okay, so they might be uh, kind of tricking all this group, the Treblors, making them think that they are uh, their, their predecessors or whatnot. But anyway, these seven faces... Oh, that just blew my mind. Okay, these seven faces want Karsa to go on this quest to start a war with all these other tribes. And Karsa, so he's kind of got their sanction and their blessing. But the other people in the tribe are like, eh, we're not too sure about that. But Karsa's like, you know, when we come back and we've unified everything, you'll be wishing that you gave me your blessing as well. And Polk, the grandpa, before they go out, goes to his son and is like, hey, have you given Karsa your blessing? And he's like, no, but I've given actually something that might work and it's my horse. It's Havoc. So he had a horse named Havoc and gave it to Karsa. And the three of them go on this quest. And they are going out trying to stir up things and make sure that uh, they stir it up enough that there's this war sort of thing that happens. And one of the things they are also trying to do is they are trying to fight off inbreeding. Inbreeding bad. So they go from these tribes and uh, tribe to tribe and they attack everyone and they uh, rape the women. Okay. And so, you know, there's this foreshadowing with Karsa where uh, he needs to cut that out. I think we can all agree to that. And he also probably will unify the tribes one day, but he's got to cut out the raping and maybe he's got to uh, point his shoulders in the right direction so, he, so he's fighting the right people. Oh, did I also mention he's like 80 and the children that he's killing are like 40, so they're not really kids. and So you're not as shocked when you get to that point, even though murderer is murderer and da-da-da-da-da-da-da. So they're on this quest, and as they're going, uh, you know, staying with the tribes until uh, each woman has had uh, 12 uh, or 11 uh, hookups with each of these three, they go on and on and on, and they find that they are starting to be kind of hunted. And they are able to just destroy all these hunters that come after them. And they find this group of dogs. Now, this group of dogs, uh, I don't know if all of them have the name, but Karsa takes kind of the alpha dog and twists his neck a little bit and is like, hey, I'm going to name you something. I'm going to name you something super cool. And it's going to be Gnaw, which is total meathead sort of dog naming. And I am all for it. So Gnaw has a three-legged girlfriend. Three legs. Wish I had a three-legged girlfriend. And he also has some other people in the tribe. That was a joke, by the way. If my wife ever watches this. Okay. And so they're on their way and they find this writing on the walls and things in, in these caves and whatnot. And the caves, uh, the writing is really fancy, kind of like this. And it is, 
they can understand it, but it's more kind of cursive or, or whatever. It's really fancy. And it brings up a couple important names. It brings up a name, Ikarium. Who we remember that from Dead House Gates. Uh, and, you know, it's been, they have traditional, they don't know if he's really been around. And Bayroth is like, oh, snap, or Dalem. One of the two is like, oh, snap, Ikarium, we've heard of this guy. And Karsa's like, nah, no, none of that stuff is really actually a thing. And also we hear of the Talan Imas in the writing. And these guys are like, we've never heard of the Talan Imas, which is crazy because on the spot, I am thinking that maybe the seven faces are Talan Imas, maybe clanless Imas or whatever. But that's what we're thinking. And the Ikarium set out these laws long, long ago to try to kind of fight off inbreeding. He gave this law of solitude. At least that's the way I see it. He kind of separated the families and said, you guys, you guys go do your own thing. And uh, at least that's how I see it. I might be totally wrong on that. But uh, there's this other law that comes about that is kind of more the tradition of the Treblor that has to do with, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really confused by at least that connection. But it could be that Ikarium set people apart and uh, the Treblor have a tradition to kind of, uh, uh, kind of undo that. Because when you set people apart too much, there's this inbreeding and da-da-da-da-da, all these kind of issues. Anyway, on their way to uh, this silver lake that they're trying to get to, they get to this cave. And under this, uh, in this cave, there's this luminescent rock with a hand in it. And... When they lift the rock, they're not sure if they're supposed to first lift the rock first. And the hands, I guess, has been gnawed at and has been flicking dogs and wolves away and bears and things or whatever was there. And it has been... Uh, so let me put hand. This hand or the rock that is on the hand. So I'll put rock down here. But really, you have to know that uh, the rock is actually over the hand and not the way I wrote it. But this rock has been worshipped by these slave masters. Slave masters. One is named Silgar. Damisk. Balantis. And, you know, there's a couple more. And so they are on their way at one point to worship this luminescent rock because they're like, that thing's awesome. That thing's awesome. And uh, before that, though, uh, Karsa and Bayroth and Delum all move that rock. And underneath it, there's this lady. And her name is Calm. So Calm is this hand. And she's really tall and really strong and very naked. Okay. And she's a little bit tired. And Karsa shows a little bit of snark and gets himself beat up by Calm. And also Calm kind of hits Delum in the head, right in the forehead, one of those. And Delum loses thought blood which you don't want to lose thought blood okay because when you lose thought blood you start to go a little bit crazy and what happened to delum is he started to become less like a person and more like one of these wolves or these dogs okay can't remember exactly which one they are but uh delum becomes our favorite little dog companion. Uh, at least for a while until he gets killed. 
fighting over meat and stuff, but then he gets killed in this battle, which is really, really annoying. Um, so Karsa and now Delam as a dog and Bayroth. Uh, Bayroth is really upset with Karsa constantly and is like, lead me, lead me. And then Karsa's like, I wish you'd stop saying that. Uh, they start to go to this, uh, this silver lake and they find these bones, this path of bones, which is probably the Talan I mass. And they're still like, I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is, but we as the reader obviously know what that is. So they go down and Bayroth is like, this is so scary. And Karsa's like, eh, it's fine. But he's probably also scared. And they get to the bottom and uh, they find that they are being kind of followed a little bit by one of these guys that they let go, this Dalem or Dalis guy. And instead of being this little town uh, at the bottom, there's this, or this little, you know, a few huts and whatnot. There's this walled city. And they go in there and they start fighting everyone, attacking everyone. And they do pretty well, but they have so many archers and, and crossbowmen and whatever. And Karsa and Bayroth get themselves captured. And that's where Delam just dies. And that's where we cry. The first time we cry in the series, actually. And so Karsa gets thrown into this slave trader, uh, into this pit where he is set down there and there's another guy called what was his name again treblor torvald wasn't even close these are the Teblor, and i added an r okay uh torvald now torvald is awesome and he's like hey do you have these chains on you that uh are loose and then they're wrapped around this log and Karsa's like, yeah, why? And he's like, well, maybe you could spin it so that the chain goes around the log and you could just drown us so that we don't have to be here anymore. And he's like, all right. And then he does it and he's, he drowns three of them before Torvald's about to go under and Torvald's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And then he actually is like, I changed my mind and Karsa's like, nah. And then he goes under and then they become best friends. And it's awesome. And that's the second time we cry in the series. Now, other than that, uh, he, uh, Karsa has this wound in him that he couldn't get out. And it's uh, an arrowhead. So he uses the arrowhead to kind of chip away at this log and stuff. And they are eventually able to get out. But way before that, I should mention that uh, they take karsa to this town square that ends up being a malazan group so we find out there that the actual the, the malazans caught them and that's uh that's probably not good for old karsa because now he's going to be a slave okay um but anyway karsa gets taken to this town square where Bayroth is sitting there chuckling and he has these arrows in him. He has a, spare, uh, a spear through his head, but he's still kind of chilling. And they're like, are you going to play ball? And Kars is like, I don't know, maybe. And they're like, all right, that's good enough for me. And right before they kill Bayroth, Bayroth's like, Bayroth shows snark. Bayroth says, lead me, war leader. And then Kars is like, what? And then they kill him. And then they're like, why were you so upset with him? And they're like, well, I didn't like how he said that. Lead me. And, uh, you know, makes sense to me. Perfect sense. So they send him back into the slave pit where there's water and muck and all this stuff. And down there, there are these other, uh, there's another group that is down there. This, this other group kind of tribe that's been captured there's at least some of them and so Kars is like you guys are such wusses so other tribe starts with an s s tribe and he's like you guys are such wusses and meanwhile one of these seven faces is like Kars is our guy Kars is the one that we should lead to do all this stuff so he thinks that he's being led by all these guys i should have mentioned that way earlier and six of them are like, nah, I don't think so. And he's like, 
uh, yeah, this this main guy that kind of Carsa likes or whatever. And did I mention that sometimes people put their kids in front of these stone faces to these guys and leave them there? Okay. Uh, and the people that they lev left there, I think, are part of the secret tribe or something. Anyway, since Kars has been taken, these guys are starting to wonder. They're starting to be like, hey, do you think Kars is actually uh, our guy? He, I mean, he's been captured. And Kars is thinking like, no, I am. I am. Trust me. And then they get out. And Torvald and Karsa become best friends still. And he's like, wow, wow, a friend, somebody not to rape or kill or, or have below me. I really like this. And so Torvald's like, yeah, it feels awesome, doesn't it? And Karsa's like, yeah, it really does. And so they get out and then there's these guys playing a game and Karsa just destroys them. And then Torvald's like, see you later. And Karsa's like, wait. And then he leaves. And then uh, Karsa goes through these places trying to find his sword, which is wooden. And he puts red Odotaral stuff on it. And sometimes he licks it to make it real sharp. And then he also, and also make his mind sharp. And also when the sorceress or sorcerer or whoever puts a spell on him. He's like, hey, nothing is happening. Kind of does, but it kind of wears off, which I'll get to. So he kind of does all this stuff and he finds his sword. But as he's walking out, he gets captured a little bit by some Malazan. So over here, there's uh, Captain Call. He's a Malazan. He's a sergeant. And we have Ebron. And he's kind of a guy that puts a spell on on Karsa, we have Limp for, you know, I can't remember what his deal is for why he had that name. Uh, but, uh, you know, I'll have to go back because, you know, these were all funny. And then there's Bell. Now, kind of they, they, they capture him and they put him in this thing. And then these slave traders that originally wanted Karsa are like, hey, that's our guy. And then the Malazan's like, no, we're going to send him out to the mines, to the Odotaro mines on this other place, which no one else knows about these Odotaro mines uh, or or that Karsa has access to Odotaro on Genebacus, which is like later on, someone's going to be like, you shouldn't say anything about that. Okay, so he these slave traders are like, no, that's our slave. I'll give you some money for that so one of them is like hey i'll give you some money for carsa and they're like no you, that's bribery and now you are also going with carsa to the Odotaro mines and they're like oh crap and so there's this scuffle that happens i need to also bring up that these seven faces like to use chains and to me Chains always means bad, especially considering the House of Chains is a reference to the crippled god. And when they were in this warren uh, with all the water, the the seven faces, which might be the Talani mass, were like, hey, I don't think Kars is one of us. And Kars is like, no, I, I actually am. And they're like, all right, got it. Um, because you said that will will help you out. And they send down these chains that kind of whip at everyone else and leaves them hanging out. It leaves uh, Torvald and it leaves uh, Karsa just fine. So I'm thinking, if I had to guess, that the crippled god, who we don't like, we still know that, the crippled god might be deceiving the seven faces or the seven faces may just be working for the crippled god and being like, we don't care, whatever. But it sounds like the crippled god is in charge of all of this and the chains and stuff because I feel like chains equals bad. But I'm not sure. And that also leads me to a part at the Warren where he keeps blacking out and he kind of stands on this mountain of bones where these chains go out from under him, all these people that he has killed and uh or, or something like that and, and that's part of this 
too. So just wanted to leave that there. And then uh, Torvald and and um, Karsa end up in this warren that Troll was in in the beginning. And Karsa is has been chained to this th- ship and everything's starting to go down. And there's all these dead ships and things and Torvald's checking everything out and is like, hey, I'll help you out in a sec if you just give me a sec. And he's like, all right. And then they eventually make them up. Uh, him, They help him get up and there's these catfish that they fight. And like it's a really cool part which I don't really understand, but we're like, hey, where's Troll? When are we going to see him? Are we going to see him in like another 150 pages? I don't know. And so let me change colors so we can actually see this a little better. So Torvald and and Torvald helps Karsa. And then Karsa's like, man, thank you. You are my best friend, Torvald. And Torvald's like, yeah, I got it. That Yeah, that's awesome. But, you know, that's just what we do. You don't have to say it so much. And then so they, they go out and they're like, we got to head out and find a way out of this place that doesn't have any wind and whatever and just has these dead boats. And as they're going, they find the slave traders and they're kind of stuck on this floating garbage. And they've been, they ate a guy. Because that's just what you do when you're stuck for, for a while. Um, I know, I know that one time, um, the lights went out at, we'd had one of those blackouts, uh, that happened and, and I ate someone before the lights came back on. So that's just what you do. And the, they find them and they're like, Hey, we want to be on your ship to get out of here. And one of these guys is like, Hey, I can get you out because I know some magic and stuff. And they're like, sure, whatever. And so they all get on the ship and they're about to, the, the warren to get out of there is about to close. And then it does close and then everything kind of crazy happens and they have this fight with a shark who eats the, the uh, Borg, who's one of the slave traders. And then they're like, whoa, that was wild. And now they are off the coast of Seven Cities. Are you following? And when they get to the coast... There is this guy that they meet. And I have no idea who this guy is. He collects bones. He's a little bit of a boner. He's a little bit of a bone man. Okay? Bone guy. Bone maker. Bone connector. He's a bone connector. And he's been connecting all sorts of bones. He has this tower that he made. To, col- to kind of put together this really, really big bone uh, bone guy that they found. And us as the readers, like, what is that? Is there some kind of giant that's in there? And this Karsa is like, why are you doing that? That's such a waste of time. And the bone guy uh, fights. Uh, he, he kind of, he's like, whoa, no snark. No snark in my tower. And so he hits Karsa, and when he wakes up, uh, Torvald and the bone guy are up in the ceiling, kind of making the tower bigger because they're like, wow, this, this giant is way bigger than we thought. And he's like, hey, but I'll help you because remember when, when, when there was some guys in Dead House Gates that you didn't read that book but because you're not in that book, but remember that? I am from Arryn or something. And I stole a whole bunch of their gold. So here's some gold. Go to town. Buy some nice things. And and just kind of lay low for a while. And I'm sure that you'll see me again. And now I don't have a prediction for that. But if I had to predict, uh, we'll see him maybe again around the 800 page mark. That might be an awesome prediction. Or, or it might not be at all. But we as a reader are like, hey, we probably know... Uh, this guy exists. He's probably one of these guys that have have drowned when Lacine was kind of uh, doing her little coup on Kellenved and you know Emperor Kellenved and the rest of them. They might be one of these crust brothers or one of these Norald or whoever types who who kind of vanished. Who she was a part of one of these Napin Napin or Norald's. 
that she's one of these Norlds or Nappin, one of the two. And so he might be one of these guys, uh, but I don't know why he would be so strong as he is, but he's one of these guys. So they make it to seven cities. And when they're there, uh, the, the, these guys, the, the slave masters who got away are like, hey, we actually want to get this Karsa still caught. And so they go ahead and they work with these Arik, I think that Arnex or Arik people, to go capture Karsa. And now Karsa's not usually having any of that, but instead of fighting them, he kind of puts his sword down in this scuffle. Uh, no scuffle happens because now he has a friend. He doesn't even need to fight anymore because now he has a best friend. But it probably would have been a good time because you should save your friends. Okay? And now he's in chains again. And Torvald's like, chill out, wait, I will get us out of here. Okay? Uh, Torvald's like, hey, give me your shirt. And then Carson's like, all right. And then he puts a whole bunch of grass in it and like makes the smoke where the Grawl uh, see it. These other guys that Fiddler was pretending to be in Deadhouse Gates. And they show up and they help kill everyone. But they also, uh, it sounds like they killed Cor Torvald. And I was like, no, dang it. And Carson's like, all right, what, whatever. I mean, he was my only friend, but I'll, I'll get over it. And so they get away, barely, but they are also captured again by Malazans or something like that. And they're like, oh, crap. And so they send Karsa into another kind of slave group. And now he's on his way to the Odotaro mines again until he meets this really attractive kind of, I mean, it's an attractive guy with attractive eyes. I don't think... Karsa's into it, but uh, attractive blue-eyed guy named Leoman. Oh, Leoman. Now, Leoman's like, hey, I had a friend like you once that was really big. You probably are a, a fen. And Karsa's like, I don't know what a fen is. I'm a teblor. And this guy's like, hey, you know what? I actually know that you are not. Uh, I mean, you're probably a fen. Or you are this other group called the Toblakai or something like that. It, it comes about something and that's a big reveal. So now we hear that Karsa is actually not a treb Teblor. He is a Toblakai. Just like Toblakai who uh, uh, Leoman was friends with, who he called Toblakai. And he's also related to the Trell or the, yeah, the Trell. So the Toblakai are related to the Trell. And Mapo's a Trell. He's probably also related to the Bargast. Which we know from the last book, they're also related to the Talan Imas. But we also know that he, uh, people in this Toblakai group are kind of, they were around a long time ago and probably mated with humans. They were like the giant kind of mythology of the land, I think. I think. So there's a chance that this bone guy, uh, anyway, I'm not going to go into that, but uh, I, I'm confused a little bit, but all these people end up being sort of related in some way and even the jagged of the time kind of spoke the same language now some of the thing that's cool about this book is there's lots of clans and families and things being broken apart which that's not the cool part uh but that's been happening in all the books and then there's these new kind of allies coming together and i've noticed that in all the books there's these unlikely allies and pairs talking tool uh, Lacine and Tool. Uh, on the spot, I'm not very good at saying all the ones that there are, but I could probably put a list of all the ones that there are. There's Torvald and and Carson. Anyway, they are able to get away and out of the city. This this 
uh, Leoman guy helps them get away. And they get under the ground, and Mekros, who... Mekros? I think that's his name. Helps Leoman get out. He's kind of a contact, but he used to be the contact, or probably still is a contact, of... of... Um, Callum, who was trying to fight Lacine. Now, so now that we're back, I can't get into everything, um, but Leoman is one of these shike. Uh, he's not a shike. He's he's part of this whirlwind group or whatever, uh, part of this rebellion led by the shike. And he's like, hey, Karsa, you know what? We should go and you should come hang out with me at this uh, rebellion up here, even though he doesn't really tell him all the all that. And Carson's like, yeah, cool. You're my friend. And uh, and he's like, hey, but I want to take this this guy first. So he takes um, who does he take? I had that on my notes. Anyway, he takes this guy cuts off his hands and his ankles and is like, but I want to take him first. And then it's like, cool, whatever. And so before they go, he's like, I need to say goodbye to my other friend who just shows up again. And that is Torvald. And Torvald's like, hey, do you know what? My buddies are here. My cousins are here. I am one of this Nom family. And I was uh, a cousin of Ralic Nam, but I also have these assassins and things up here. So I'm going to go hang out with them for a while, but I'll see you later. And Karsa's like, yeah, chill. I'm going with this blue eyed guy. And then Torvald's like, all right, well, I wish we could have been better friends. And probably in like another few hundred pages, we'll become best friends again. And so that's where we're at. And so in sub book two, it goes into a different thing, but if you needed help, kind of orienting yourself for sub book one. I hope I was able to help and I will see you on the next video and no snark.